understand the basics of the human immune system, both for the design of new cell therapies and manufacturing methods, as well as to understand how our bodies might respond to cell therapies. The immune system itself can be broadly split into two types of immunity. There's innate immunity, and then there's adaptive immunity. Now, innate immunity is the body's first line of defense, so we can raise a response against a foreign object within hours. On the other hand, adaptive immunity requires more steps and it's a more complex process, so it can take us several days to a week to raise an adaptive immunity against a threat we've not encountered before. Both types of immunities have a cellular component, and that cellular component of our immune response includes a range of specialized cells, as well as a humoral component. And that humor is just the non-cellular components that are circulating in our blood. So a key question you may be asking about the immune response is, well, how does the immune system in our body decide that something is a foreign object that must be attacked and destroyed so it doesn't infect us versus part of us and should be left alone? Well, it turns out that foreign objects display identifiers, markers on their surface typically, that say these are different from our body's own cells. And we call those identifiers antigens because they generate that anti-response or that immune response. And common antigens include proteins or sugars. Even other human cells that are transplanted into a patient, another person, can elicit an immune response, especially if the immunological profiles of the donor and the patient, the recipient of those cells, are different. And this would mean that the cells from the donor are displaying the quote unquote wrong antigens that aren't recognized by the body of the patient. You know this already in the context of having your blood typed, whether you're giving or receiving blood. But in the context of cell therapy, we hear this discussed as graft versus host disease. The cells are from the graft or from the donor, the host, the patient. And this is a challenge in both allogeneic and xenogeneic cell therapies. So first, let's look at innate immunity. And in a later section, we'll tackle adaptive immunity. Now, innate immunity will quickly target and attack the foreign object even if our body has never actually seen or encountered that foreign object before. So as you might expect, innate immunity is rather nonspecific, and our bodies will raise a similar response to a wide variety of antigens. The first part of the innate immune system is actually your skin, just a simple yet amazing physical barrier that keeps these foreign objects out. But if a pathogen breaches the skin, for example, you get a cut, the body's other defenses come to bear. The cellular component of that innate immune response involves the circulating cells in our bloodstream, such as neutrophils, as well as the sentinel cells within our tissues. These so-called sentinel cells are primarily dendritic cells and macrophages, and they're found in the tissue even before it is infected. The dendritic cells are really interesting. These are our body's first responders to many kinds of pathogens. And they phagocytose or engulf that pathogen, and in response then release cytokines, biochemical signals, that generate an inflammatory response. This response recruits additional circulating cell types, such as those neutrophils from our bloodstream, to the site of the invasion or the infection, and that boosts the immune response against the foreign object. In the case of invading viruses, we have another kind of cell, natural killer, or NK cells, and they serve the first line of defense against a virus. When the NK cells detect an indicator of a viral infection, then they will either attempt to kill the infected cells directly, or they'll release signaling molecules that induce that antiviral response from other cells in our immune system. The humoral component of the innate immunity is also known as the complement system. And this means that we have circulating complement proteins, for example, that will bind to the surface of that foreign cell, such as a bacterium. And in response to that binding, set off a cascade of protein and enzymatic responses to fight off and attack that foreign object. Interestingly, the inflammatory response that was begun by the innate immune system 
is also the beginning of the adaptive immune response. And we'll learn about that next.